Peace and blessings. It's your boy Chaz Burke, and I just wanted to come to you with this message of hopefully hope, hopefully inspiration, and certainly some understanding. So jump right into it. What we're seeing in America is it is a mess. It's a mess that has a lot of angles to it, uh, and it's very complex, but at the same time, it's very simple to understand. And I'm going to put this in terms that hopefully we can all just have a common understanding and a pathology of where it's come from. As we know, the beginning of this country was founded on religious principles of being able to worship freely and to have a society where your man was able to pursue happiness in his own image. And the British came and they actually colonized this area. And we all know that the indigenous Indians in this country, the Native Americans, were here long before any of us. They had already established themselves as a thriving culture and many different nations and that was subsequently wiped away almost to non-existence. That has happened over and over and over again in a lot of places in the world, but we're talking about America right now. So we fast forward to you know enslaved Africans being brought here to work for free labor, not only work, but just give years and years and years, hundreds of years, generation after generation after generation of free labor under the boot, under the whip, under rape and everything else you could possibly imagine to the point where you know african americans were dehumanized and valued as less than human matter of fact horses and animals were prized over black people in america so we all know that and if some of us didn't then where have you been for the last decades but anyhow we have this issue that we were never rightfully uh, compensated not only monetarily but in a social sense, in a meaning, in a manner where we were restored to our human dignity and decency. And the idea over the last hundred years has been this misguided stereotype that black people in America were less worthy. And if anything that you had at this point in time was gotten by hard work and well-deserved, and if you didn't have anything, then you were probably lazy. Well, we know that is further from the truth because the institutions that are running right now, this day and age in 2020, are those same institutions that were established well over 100 years ago. And they were designed to keep people of color in a position of less power. Less power. Unequal treatment. And when you have a whole country that grows up with this mindset of, you know, I have mine and I'm not worried about you. There's something wrong with you, and by the way, I'm better than you. That is not going to get you forward. So this revolution that we're seeing today, and it's not just begun today. You know, we are picking up the pieces from the call for justice from years and years and years ago. I'm not even talking about the civil rights movement. And prior to that, you know, the Civil War, and prior to that, people who were really stood up to abolitionists in this country, who, who stood up for injustice. And we always talk about how America stands for justice. And when you have people who get in a position of power and do not apply justice and the laws of the land equally to everybody, that's an injustice. That's what I've been witnessing in my 50 years on this earth and my father and his 90 years and my mother and her 90 years. Uh, and my grandparents, my grandmother was 103. You all hear me talk about her a lot. Grew up in the South Danville, Virginia. Um, the fact of the matter is we have endured as a people and we continue to grow as citizens and learn and strive for great things, do great and wonderful things, but yet people are still dying at the hands of oppressors. And today that takes the form of police officers who enforce these laws. And the laws are the laws. However, the treatment is not the same for people of black and brown skin. It's just not. We see day in and day out. Innocent citizens are being killed by the police who either just don't care or have a motive of just not liking people of color. That is not fair. It's not beyond not fair. It's incomprehensible that this has been allowed to take place today in this modern so-called society. And it is time to stop. People have had enough. I've had enough. I know you've had enough. It is time to do whatever it takes to right this ship and it's time to do whatever it takes that we all get on the same page and stand together and ensure that each and every one of us has the same opportunity to be great. We can't be great if somebody is holding us back and has the shackles on us, putting their knees on our necks, 
putting things in our way as far as prosperity and economic opportunities. Black people have less capital to work with in this country. It's a fact because of the system. The banks are set up and designed that way. Everything is as far as we pay more in banking fees. It's just an example. It has been set up that way and it's been so long and instilled so deeply that the average person doesn't even look deeply enough and think about it. And it makes you start to think, well, that group of people over there must be doing something wrong. No, quite on, quite on the contrary. The, the thing is, it's not that we're doing anything wrong. It wasn't set up in the right way in the first place. So that's where we're at, folks. And a lot of you see that. A lot of you see right through it because we talk about it. I'm glad people are reaching out to me. And I'm, I'm going to try to keep this positive message going and, and incite some critical thinking. Some self-searching, I do it all the time. It's hard to stay focused, it's hard to stay positive because you're, quite frankly, you just get tired of this mental fatigue. And, and, and my grandfather passed it to my father, and my father passed it to me, and I don't want to pass it to my son and grandsons because I want them to feel a strong sense of pride in their country, a strong sense of pride in who they are, as that's what we were instilling in them. Uh, but we, we got to make sure that when they stand up for their country, that their country stands up for them. That's the only message I have for today, folks. We're going to get this thing figured out. And, and, and as they used to say, by hook or crook, we got we got to right this ship. Peace and blessings. I hope this message reaches you in, in good spirits. And um, we can do better, America. We have to. Peace.